Hello everyone, welcome. This is Steve Suffolato from SUNY State University, New York at Erie. We're located just south of Buffalo, New York. Today I want to talk about trigonometry and its uses in the graphic arts printing industry. I want to talk about three examples, how we measure screen angles for halftones, how we measure the squareness of paper, and how we would calculate the CIE colorimetric Q angle. I'm aware many students don't feel comfortable with math. However, my expectations are that students can use a ruler to measure, can perform basic math operations on a calculator. The most common conversion I need you to do is to convert from inches into metric millimeters and vice versa, metric millimeters into inches. So we're going to talk about duotone photographs. They need different screen angles to avoid these unwanted interference patterns like morays. And then we're going to talk about cut sheet paper, determining if it's square and perpendicular. One branch of mathematics is geometry. And geometry describes the shape, the size, and the space of an object. The space would be its area and its volume. A polygon is a geometric shape with many poly and gon corners or angles. So we have three sided objects, which are triangles, and RGB would have that color space. We have four sided quadrilaterals, and CIE lab color space is that. We have five sided geometric shapes called pentagons. Six sided shapes are called hexagons, and this would be the C and Y color space. And an eight sided object would be called an octagon. Looking in more detail at quadrilaterals, quadrilaterals are four sided. We have squares, we have rectangles. They can either be vertical portrait or horizontal landscape. Small printing presses or duplicators like the Ryobis typically run vertical portrait where larger format printing presses would run horizontal landscape. A rhombus, which most people recognize as a diamond, a kite figure, a parallelogram, where the two sides are parallel, and a trapezoid. Looking at triangles, which are three-sided, we can classify them and categorize triangles either by their side length or by their angles. For side length, we can have equilaterals, which means all three sides have the same or equal lengths and angles. We can have an isosceles triangle, where two sides have the same length and angle. Or we can have a scaling triangle where none of the sides or angles are the same. When we look at angles, all interior angles must equal 180 degrees. So we have a right triangle, which has one 90 degree angle. We have acute angles, which are less than 90 degrees. And we have obtuse angles, which are greater than 90 degrees. Now, if you have a right triangle, you can apply and use trigonometry. And in trigonometry, and the common terms we use in trigonometry are the opposite side, which is the height or the rise, the adjacent side, which is the length, the width, or the run, and the hypotenuse, which is the longest diagonal. So in trigonometry, you have the sine, so, you have the cosine, ka, and you have the tangent, toa. What this means is the sine is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. The cosine is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And the tangent is the opposite divided by the adjacent. So if you know those lengths of those legs, that simple fraction or ratio, then you can apply the sine, cosine, and tangent to it. Again, with right triangles and trigonometry, we can use the Pythagorean theorem, which says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Using simple algebra, we can solve for just c, and c is the square root of a squared plus b squared. Again, the sine, cosine, and tangent, or so, ka, toa, where o is opposite 
A is adjacent and H is hypotenuse. So in semester three, on the Ryobi 3302s, both the M and the C model, we'll be printing this duotone screen angle project, and we'll be doing it multiple times for multiple colors. And the very bottom row there is a diagonal slanted line, which we can measure. And the height in all three cases is 12 units. It may be 12 pixels or 12 millimeters. But the units are not important here as long as they're all the same. The width on the left is 12. The width in the middle is 9. And the width is 5 to the right. So 12 divided by 12 would be 1.0. 12 divided by 9 would be 1.33, and 12 divided by 5 would be 2.4. So now, if you take the tangent, actually the arc tangent of 1, you get 45 degrees. The arc tangent of 1.33 is 53 degrees, and the arc tangent of 2.4 is 67 degrees. Note that on the printed press sheet, I'm saying 50, 50 degrees instead of 53 degrees, and 65 degrees instead of 67 degrees. Don't worry about that insignificant detail. The big picture is the math is very close. There's some rounding errors there. Now, when you use the same screen angle in a duotone, it's called dot on dot printing. You don't get any patterns, but what you do get is extreme color variation. So you don't want that. When you use 53 degrees for the lighter color on the duotone, you get a moiré, which is an unwanted, objectionable interference pattern. And then when you use 67 degrees, you get a rosette, which is an acceptable interference pattern. It's a moiré that has been minimized, so hopefully it's not noticeable. Another example of using trigonometry in printing is to determine the squareness of a cut sheet of paper. So if I cut a piece of paper to 8.5 by 11 inches, how do I know if it's square? Well, you could measure its diagonal length. So if you do that, it should come out to 13 and 7 eighths of an inch fractional form or 13.9 decimal form. And when you get into advanced color measurement or color management, we'll use C, International Committee on Illumination, L star, A star, B star, and we'll calculate the hue angle. And again, the hue angle is the arc tangent of B divided by A star. Now, if you do this, cyan is a special case because you're in a negative quadrant. So I would do the um, magenta and yellow and black, and then come back and do the cyan, and you'd have to subtract away uh, 180 degrees. And then we have the famous carpenter's rule, or rules, plural, measure twice, cut once. What we're trying to say here is you want to avoid prevent any mistakes and scrap and waste, because if you make a mistake, that's exactly what it is. The other carpenter rule is using the proportions 3, 4, 5 to determine if something's square. Now, it can be a 6, 8, 10, or it can be a 9, 12, 15, or it can be a 12, 16, 20, or it can be a 15, 20, 25. These are all the same proportions. And of course, the protractor there is a tool or an instrument, a gauge, that will automatically calculate the angle for you. So in summary, there are many practical applications of math in the printing industry. Calculating halftone screen angles, color hue angle, and determining squareness are some of them. Math is not just useless theory that will never be used. Most software will automatically do the math for you. I appreciate your attendance and participation. Hopefully you found this interesting and informative, and as always, please provide feedback for continuous improvement. See you soon. Bye now.